Have you ever had to manage 30 feral cats covered in glue and glitter? Because that's what teaching elementary school in December is like. Kids are excited, preoccupied with Santa, and not wanting to do much work. Teachers are desperately trying to keep the class focused while finishing up tests and projects. It's an abnormal month of school. You are encouraged to have fun crafts and holiday experiences, all while trying to meet the academic requirements thrust upon you. Teaching conjunctions to a room full of kids on ugly sweater day is like trying to put Christmas pajamas on a cat in heat. <laughs> Christmas gifts are the only bonuses we receive. Over the years, I've received many presents, usually cheap boxes of chocolate. I'm looking at you, Russell Stover. $5 Starbucks cards, coffee mugs that say, world's best teacher. So basically gifts I would never choose for myself. Too often the gifts were apple-shaped ornaments with my name and the school year printed on them. If I wanted a tree full of monogrammed ornaments, I'd go work for Pottery Barn. <laughs> I don't mean to sound ungrateful. It's the thought that counts, right? But what kind of... What kind of thought is a popcorn tin that expired last February? <laughs> or a Red Lobster gift card that has $12.71 left on it? <laughs> True story. <laughs> the worst teaching day in December is the last day before winter break. That final week is a teacher's nightmare. Kids are hyped up. Flu season has begun. Haha, <laughs> flu. Oh, God. Love that. <laughs> Love that old guy. Um, and someone in administration thinks it's a great idea to have pajama day. If I wanted to see 35 kids in their grungy pajamas, I'd join a community theater production of Oliver Twist. <laughs> the saving grace of the last day before winter break was our lunchtime. Teachers rushed to the staff lounge for a sliver of sanity and a break from students. The lounge was just a drab room where teachers could vent, swear, and discuss where our next happy hour was. <laughs> the lounge in December was full of Christmas candy, homemade treats, and laughter. At lunch, teachers brought their best, worst, and most ridiculous gifts to show off to each other. A favorite of mine was a mug that read, It takes a big heart to teach little minds. <laughs> On the flip side, there were teachers who received beautiful, sentimental notes that they read aloud to the group. Now and then, someone would receive an extravagant item, a large amount of cash, or a luxury store gift card. One year, I was gifted an assortment of cheeses. I always joked in class about how much I loved cheese, and this student clearly listened. <laughs> The gift suited me perfectly. But in the lunchroom, we had the most fun sharing the weird gifts, the ones that elicited the most laughs. On one such December school day, a sweet, quiet student named Kayla handed me a Victoria's Secret gift bag. <laughs> I was used to Rudolph, Santa, even a Walmart bag, but not Victoria's Secret. Kids would often say, you can open it now, if they were excited about the gift. I usually declined, not wanting to take up class time or make students who did not have gifts feel bad. I stood there holding my Victoria's Secret bag in front of 35 first graders. A few of the boys started chanting, open it, open it. <laughs> I quickly went on the offensive and said, thanks, Kayla. I can't wait to open it on Christmas. She smiled and skipped away. After dropping my students off at lunch, I had to see what was in the Victoria's Secret bag. <laughs> I assumed there would be an ugly coffee mug nestled in some tissue paper. Instead, I pulled out an ornament. It was a clear ball ornament with a black feather boa around the top. Inside the ball was a trial-sized bottle of Victoria's Secret Very Sexy For Her perfume. <laughs> 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 
The liquid inside appeared darker than any perfume I knew. Perhaps a Victoria's Secret angel had replaced the perfume with bourbon. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to smell it or drink it, but it was perfect to share in the staff room at lunch. I burst into the lunchroom and said, wait till you see what I got today. I held up my very sexy ornament. My friends looked at the sexy perfume. Their eyes darted back and forth between the ornament and me. <laughs> Altogether, they burst out laughing. If you think elementary teachers are sexy, you're either too old you, you don't remember elementary school, or you've watched some deeply problematic porn. <laughs> What kid gave you that gift, my friend and teaching partner Nikki asked. Take a guess. Nikki and the other teachers were ready with their lists of suspects. Was it Chad? Didn't his dad hit on you, Kate? Not Chad. And yes, his dad hit on me. <laughs> I know, it was Dylan. The kid who wrote about going to Hooters every Sunday? <laughs> nope, not Dylan. My friend Jen called out. Oh, I know, it's from that one mom whose boobs are always falling out of her shirt. <laughs> Wrong again. I told them it was from Kayla's family. Kayla, Nikki said, but she's so quiet and shy. All the teachers speculated as to why Kayla's family chose this gift for me. Was there a gift with purchase at Victoria's Secret? Was this where they did all their Christmas shopping? <laughs> did someone in the family think for some creepy reason that I was sexy? <laughs> Nikki took my ornament and held it up. What parent would let their six-year-old pick out this kind of perfume? And then it hit me. My own parent would. When I was six years old, I wanted to do my own Christmas shopping, but only for my mom. Being the youngest of three kids, I was constantly teased and tortured by my big brother and sister so clearly I would not be getting gifts for them. <laughs> my dad offered to take me shopping for my mom. We went to Sibley's, the oldest department store in our city. My dad followed me around the store as I looked for the perfect gift. I brought my mo own money, which was definitely not enough for anything in Sibley's, but my dad let me look at scarves, sweaters, and jewelry. When we came to the perfume counter, I saw the most beautiful, tiny bottle of perfume. I asked my dad if I could get that for mom. He smiled and said yes. The perfume was Sex Appeal by Joe Vaughn. <laughs> I don't know how my dad did not burst out laughing as the woman behind the counter wrapped my Christmas gift. I also don't know how my mom hid her bewilderment when she opened it Christmas morning. And clearly it took more than a few martinis for Joe Vaughn's ad team to come up with their slogan that year, which was, someone you know wants it. <laughs> Each time my parents were going out or having a dinner party, I would ask my mom if she was wearing my perfume. She would say yes, but the bottle always looked full to me. She kept the bottle on a curio shelf she had in my parents' bedroom. It stayed there far too long. When I was 14, I spotted the bottle on the shelf and remembered it was from me. I read the name on the bottle. Hoping to hide my mother's sex appeal forever, I shoved it behind a ceramic squirrel. When I finished the, telling this story to the lunchroom, there was a long, silent pause. Well, can't top that, Nikki said. The bell rang, signaling the end of lunch. Only one more hour of classroom chaos before the start of winter break. I took all my gifts home and placed them under my tree. My apartment now looked more festive, having presents where there were none. I hung my very sexy ornament on the tree to catch the eyes of my visiting friends. <laughs> so why would Kayla's mom let her choose this gift? 
Perhaps she was shopping with her mom and saw the very sexy ornament and asked her mom to buy it for me. She too was six years old. Maybe it was her first time picking out gifts. Very was a word she could read, but sexy wasn't on our first grade reading list. <laughs> Maybe she just saw a pretty ornament for a teacher she admired. Perhaps her excitement for the ornament, for buying a special gift, was the same as mine when I was six. My teacher friends and I continued our tradition of sharing ridiculous gifts. Every teacher, especially in December, needs comic relief. It's better to give than to receive is such a cliche, but perhaps it's true. I'm sure I was more excited about giving sex appeal to my mom than she was to receive it from me. And the same was probably true for Kayla. Whether she picked out my very sexy gift herself or just delivered it to me, she enjoyed the act of giving. I bet she gave her teacher a gift each year after that, maybe from Victoria's Secret, but probably not. My parents don't even recall the sex appeal perfume, but I remember. I remember what it was like to feel happy, proud, and loving, giving a special gift, no matter how ridiculous it seems now. And that feeling lingers far longer than the scent of any cheap perfume. That was Kate McGovern.